Welcome back nomads. If you guys are new to my channel, also welcome. If you guys want to know more about me, I have it in my description in this video and I have it on my about section on my YouTube channel. Now for today's video, the sole purpose is to do a Q&A video on me since I started my channel. I'm doing this and celebrating my 200 subscriber mark that I just hit about a week ago now. So let's get into the video. Our first question of the day is, in what ways have you grown mentally and spiritually? Well, I used to picture myself being um, insecure. Um, very negative things that I would just feed my mind. And after reading books upon books about financing, self-improvements, um, all types of those beneficial books for yourself, um, my mind started changing. I started meditating in the mornings. I say affirmations in the mornings to myself, positive ones and motivational ones. Um, I did this exercise where you make a desire statement. You follow the steps in this book. And then after you do that, you physically write it down and then you recite it before you start your day and before you end your day. And I got that exercise from Think and Grow Rich. I highly suggest reading that book. I will put it right here and I will also put in the link in the description. Um, on top of that, I also learned that if you just start your day by thanking with, with what you already have instead of complaining what you don't have, you would have a better life. I promise you, eventually if you keep on saying that to yourself, those outcomes are going to um, gravitate towards you. So start your day by being grateful instead of just complaining on what you don't have. And if you do that, you're telling that in your conscious mind that will eventually go into your subconscious mind and then your subconscious mind will gravitate towards those outcomes that you feed it. So do that and 100% guarantee that your life will be so much better and you'll be a lot happier. Um... The next question is, what countries do you plan on traveling, moving in the near future? Well, for my 21st birthday, I want to go to Ibiza, Spain. I've seen that on this show called White Lines, and I just fell in love with it ever since. It's basically a party island. <laughs> so I plan on going there. Um, the next place would be Thailand. I don't know where exactly. Um, please recommend me places. Japan, Bali, Indonesia, Singapore, Croatia, just to see the Game of Thrones scenes because that's where they filmed on certain places, especially the castles. So I want to go see that. Um, and then Greece, I don't know any place, so recommend as well in the comment section. The next thing is what are your future goals? Um, here's my thing about goals. Um, they're the result of what you're looking for, right? But many people that set goals typically don't achieve them just because um, the mindset that they have and the routines that they do do not correlate with the goal that they want. So in, in order for you to get the goal that you want, I wouldn't even say like it's a goal. I would rather say as a system, if you build the outcome that you want through a system, you will eventually get it. Um, setting goals really doesn't help anything because it's just a goal, but what are you doing to get that goal? You know, if you want to lose weight, for an example, um, typically you will have bad habits of eating junk food or not going to the gym. But if you build a system that makes you disciplined on going to the gym, going to your results um, when you're weighing your scale, and weigh in what you eat, then you will eventually get that result. But um, I typically don't have goals. I just try to build structures because the structures will get you to that end goal that you want. And you should actually focus on the journey, not the destination. Um, so again, just a review, I would do systems, not goals. Um, next question is, what really pushed you to make the decision on moving to the Philippines? Um, for starters, wanting to travel as young as I can. I wanted to be different than my friends and family who generally don't travel that much. 
um, attend a school in a different country. I wanted to be bold and different, so I already did those. Um, and then discover more about myself. And since moving here, I have done that and I've grown immensely like I never imagined I would have. Um, and then I also wanted to see how well or poorly I can do away from my support group and the people that I care about. So the next question is, what is your favorite Filipino dish? I have so many, <laughs> but my top four is pork sisig, lechon, sinagong, which is a soup, and then adobo, um, the chicken version. So pork sisig, that is basically chopped up pig face, and then lechon is a roasted pig. Um, sinagong is a type of soup that's so good and then adobo is a mixture of um, chicken with um, I forgot what else they do but it's like herbs it's really good with rice and the next question is what Filipino foods have you tried so on top of the ones that I already listed I also had pork mongos um, they're Filipinos version of fish they just um, smoke them instead of cooking them like the way I'm used to as being a Hispanic <laughs> difference so that's why I put it on the list um, pancet eggs with sardines this is a breakfast item polot lumpia banana cue um, tocino it's not the same as um, bacon it's a little different but it still does taste good Filipino pastas um, I say it this way because they have spaghetti and carbonara that's more sweet than the taste that you get when you have it at an Italian restaurant and then mango float which is an amazing dessert oh my god it's so good <sighs> I don't know how to go like it's my it's just freaking bomb that's what it is okay trust me and then uh, the next question is do you have do you plan to explore around the whole country yes I have some places that I really want to go visit Shargao which is um, famous for surfing I do want to learn how to surf so um, I eventually want to go there when I know how to surf Sikihor I see it all over my social media feed it looks amazing there's a nice waterfall there too so I will eventually go there that's very close I think it's maybe an hour ferry ride. Manila for the clubs because that's what it's known for and that's that's about it. And then Palawan. Ooh, Palawan looks beautiful. There's two places that you can go to. You go to El Nido and then there's the other one. I forgot the name of it, but that place is beautiful. Look it up. Craziest things you've seen since being out here. Oh boy. <laughs> um, the power lines along the street signs. Street sides. There's so many like wires. It's crazy. It's a bird nest of wires that I just don't see. Um, the guards at our condos or banks or policemen, they carry shotguns or more heavy armored guns. That was cool, but I don't know if they would use them or not. Whale sharks, those things are massive. I have two videos that you can see right here. I highly suggest coming and seeing them in the Philippines because I don't think they're anywhere else in the world and they're freaking massive. So again, I have a video right here, two of them. So go see it, like right now. You can skip this, just go see it. And then another thing that I saw was um, kids around the ages of five and above are um, on the streets just selling whatever that they can to make money. Um, it's kind of sad, but that's that's also like crazy from what I've seen. And then I'm all having an ice skating rink. Like who in the who in their right mind would think, oh let's incorporate an ice skating rink in a mall? Like what? Um, so many straight dogs and cats on the on the streets everywhere and some of them have uh, bugs like their their furs all the way 
gone. I don't know what that's called, but that was crazy. And I've seen two dogs fight in front of me when I was eating. That was also crazy. Um, actually terrifying. The last thing that I would have to say is they, if you're going in a van or a jeepney, <laughs> they pack you in there so tight. It's like you're in a can of sardines. They do not care as long as you get them where you need to go and as many as they can fit inside that jeepney or van. The next question is, what made you pick the Philippines as your first country to visit? Um, if I'm being honest, it was not my first country that I wanted to come visit or what came to mind when I wanted to start traveling. However, after my dad came back from his first time visiting, I kid you not, he was like obsessed. He was watching all types of YouTube videos on YouTubers that were in the Philippines living their life. And I don't know, it just got me curious. I'm like, is it really all that? Or is it just the simple fact of traveling to a different country? So in that sense, I kind of was leaning towards the Philippines just because he's been there and why not? I don't hear that much about the Philippines anyways when people travel. And it's such an underrated country to come visit. So if you're a tourist and you are looking for a country to come visit, I suggest coming to the Philippines. Um, how long did it take you to settle in the Philippines? Now this one, I, don't, I didn't know how to answer it. I don't know if they meant like settling as in finding a place or getting comfortable living here. So I'm going to go with the second option. And I would say it took me two to three months to really register in my mind and come to the realization that I'm living here for the next year with no one to see besides my dad and his friend. So yeah, it took me two to three months to really understand that I'm going to be living here for the next year. What do you miss the most from the States? Honestly, the food and people. The food, I love Filipino food, but damn, there's just some dishes that I just miss more. Like right now, I've been craving for the last month an In-N-Out burger <laughs> or a Five Guys burger. Like, whew. those right there. Oh, and Mexican food. I miss my tacos so, so, so much. The meat here is not the same as it is in the States. So it's the food and my people. All my people, if you guys are watching this, you guys know who you are. I miss you guys. I love you guys. And I can't wait to see you guys, can't wait to see you guys next summer. But it's okay. Right now I'm living to the fullest. And I can't wait to see you guys and share all my stories with you guys. So the next one would be, how long does it take to for you to edit your videos? Um, when I first started, it took me typically two to four hours because um, I was doing all this extra stuff and I didn't know that much about my editing software system. So I was in my learning stage. I've had experience with YouTube before, so I knew some things, but yeah, it took me two to four hours. Um, but now it takes me a maximum of two hours to edit my videos because I'm starting to learn on what you need to do. And I have some pro tips on what I've learned since um, editing my videos. So when you're editing your videos and you want to grow your channel, um, you should create your title and your thumbnail before because when you're out there shooting, you already know, you have a just idea or exactly you know exactly what you're going to be filming and you don't waste that much time in production trying to get this image or get that or oh i miss this i missed saying this or saying that so it saves you time when you're doing um your editing um and then the next one is um shoot to film so purposely know um, if you're doing like seamless transitions you should know what you're going to be doing to get there to go to the next point and just being really creative about it um, you should also view your competitors if you're making a video um, see what they're doing and see if you can make it better or do something that no one has done yet and then um, try to make your content more engaging and not too bland I hope I'm not doing that for you guys um, I have been 
told that my videos sometimes can be very monotone. <laughs> I'm really trying not to be monotone, but that's just the way I speak. And I'm just not used to speaking on a camera, but I think I'm getting better. So all in time, I'll get far better. And then the last thing I want to mention is um, be detailed in the description. It's not that much of an importance on growing your channel, but it is also an important factor in making your videos. What's your favorite video that you've posted so far? Honestly, both Whale Sharks videos. That was the number one thing that I wanted to do here in the Philippines since I landed. I'm like, Dad, let's go. Let's go to the Whale Sharks. I want to see the Whale Sharks. Like, that was the main thing. And they're freaking massive. Oh my God. So massive. Yeah, it surprises me every time I went. So the first time, I'm like, damn. The second time, there were so many of them. I was scared of them because they were like, I was touching them. Like, the three of them were like all over me. That was like very terrifying. But all in all, I still had a fun time. And I highly suggest coming here just to see the whale sharks. So come here. And whale sharks was the most exciting thing that I got to see here in the Philippines. What did you want? Why did you want to start your YouTube channel? Um, honestly, to document my life as a 20 year old in the Philippines, which sounds crazy in one sentence, um, with no one except my dad and his friend. And if you guys know me, I'm a person that typically records everything about my friends or family and I catch them in like the best moments, which are the most embarrassing moments. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I think those are just like very cherishable memories. So when I look back on them, I'm like, dang. That was crazy. Or I used to look like that. Or I used to think like that. I used to hang out with these types of people. And a lot of my friends get annoyed, but I don't care because those are memories that I have of them. And then they can also look back when I share it with them. So I've always been a person that captured those moments. So I'm like, hey, why not capture my life here in the Philippines as a 20 year old? So that's my reason. What's your favorite thing about the States? Again, um, seeing my family and friends, and I also miss the cold weather. Here it's a very humid country, so I miss wearing pants, I miss wearing sweaters, I miss wearing my Tims, my Uggs, so those type of things, and that's about it. What is the best memory you have in the Philippines? <sighs> Meeting all types of people. Every trip that I've been to, we've met like all types of people. I met Spaniards, I've met um, Puerto Ricans, I've met uh, Filipinos from the States, um, one from New Jersey, one from the Bay Area as well, which is in San Francisco. Um, and I met people from here in Manila. Like I met a lot of people from Manila. So I think it's just meeting people in general. That was like my biggest, my best and greatest memorable memory. What was my biggest fear about moving to the Philippines? What if it didn't work out for me? That might have been the most fearful thing because if it didn't work out for me, then it would prove the point to the people that are doubting me that I'm not able to live in a third world country and I don't know, the the feeling of defeat, you know? I just didn't want that, so I'm gonna be stubborn and if I don't like it, I'm going to find a way to still prove a point that you can live anywhere in the world and you could make a living who is someone that motivates you and inspires you this one was kind of difficult to answer because i don't know i don't have someone that really motivates me like a, a mentor really um, I would say mainly myself. If you can't motivate yourself to do something, then someone else motivating you won't really push you. I mean, it could, but at the end of the day, it is your decision if you want to improve yourself, if you want that certain outcome in your life, if you want more money, if you want a better job, if you want to be more happy, um, a better lifestyle, all in all. So I think the person that motivates me the my the most would be myself as of this moment um i do want to work under a person so i can learn to be the person that i want to become favorite music genre and artist i don't have a favorite music genre because 
I am very diversified in those genres, but I do have a favorite artist, and that's in hip hop rap. It's called, some of you guys may know him because you guys know me so well, it is J. Cole. One is, What's your favorite food? This one was hard, so I just listed different types of food and what's my favorite in each food category. <laughs> so let's begin. <laughs> so starting off, Mexican food, go birria tacos with cheese. Oh my god. Thai food, any coconut curry with brown rice. You let that rice soak up all that curry and you're just eating a mouthful of goodness. I swear to god. Italian food, my mom's lasagna because that is busting. Like, so good. And then seafood pasta, woo, those clams and mussels and scallops. Oh my god. Japanese food, sushi, duh. Um, <laughs> and then Afghan food would be lamb kebabs. Those are my favorite. Lamb is just so good. It's a unique taste, but I'm glad that I like it and I'm not a picky eater. And there's a top ton more but those are like my main go-to's every time I go out so that's that's that weird food combos you have tried in the Philippines that are interest intra surprisingly good y'all ready <laughs> because woo. um egg and sardines weird but it goes together it's a little fishy and i don't know how to describe it but it's like it has a fishy taste but it's still good um banana ketchup with fries when i first saw that i was served banana ketchup i'm like what the hell is this but actually after trying it it's not bad the name sounds more worse than actually taste um the best uh the best comparison I can to the taste would be um, chamoy, <laughs> if you guys know what that is. Just imagine eating chamoy with fries, and it's not bad. Um, mustard with chicken wings. I tried it here, and that is actually good. I was like, at first I was like, no, but it tastes good. Cheese powder with fries. Since they don't have cheese here, they use like cheese sauce or um, a powdered version and it's still good as well rice and gravy that was good i had that at 7-eleven and the fried chicken here oh my god i kid you not anywhere you go to get fried chicken so good so good <laughs> um cheese bread with sugar so i don't know what it is but it's called cheese sticks and Filipinos love sugar. They love sugar and they love vinegar. Ask anyone here, they freaking love that stuff. So this cheese bread had a um, sweet taste to it. It's almost like a dessert. And I was like skeptical at first, but after trying it, I'm like, that's freaking bomb. So <laughs> that's good too. Um, last one, balot with vinegar. That was so good. I have a video up here. I will put a timestamp in the description and also on that video on where I am eating balot for the first time. So good and I highly suggest everyone eating it. There's different ages that you could pick to eat. The more developed it is, the more you have a chance of seeing a almost full grown chicken egg or a chicken. So um, the earlier the better <laughs> so you don't get grossed out from I don't know is you just have to try it you know so try it look up that video look at the timestamp and you'll see what I'm talking about how long do you think you'll live in the Philippines honestly that will be determined after my first full year living here in the Philippines I am doing school here so that will also determine how long I stay here um, that's all I have to say about that I don't know as of this moment because of those two factors um, what do you hope to accomplish while living in the Philippines? Being able to live on my own. I want to be able to have my own income that I can be able to live on my own. Um, building a community of like-minded people, whether it's at school, um, I create one online. 
whichever the case is, I want to be surrounded by like-minded people that are very entrepreneurial uh, motivated and, you know, have same similar interests as me. And I also, on top of that, want to network with as many people as I can because you never know who you network with. They can lead you to a place that you um, want to eventually get to. So networking with a lot of people is very beneficial and that's what I want to achieve while I'm living here. And then that's about it. I went through all the questions. So that's about it, guys. I hope you guys loved this q and I'm going to be doing more as my gr channel grows as a reward for you guys having faith in me and actually being interested in my, uh, my life. So um, thank you guys again. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And if you guys want to be part of the per um, part of the Q&A and asking questions or um, video ideas, you can put them in the comments or you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I have them linked in my bio, I believe, and on this um, link in the description as well. So go follow me there. I post there almost daily and um, see you guys in the next videos.